So now we're live. All right, let's see if I can see it on your page. Okay, so I see it. Let me see if I can share it. Oh, wait, I can't focus on it. Can you do a watch party? Yeah, I'm going to share it. Yeah. Can you do a watch party? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think I can. Echoing. Yeah, I think I got it. Okay. We're good. Okay. Yep. All right. It's one o'clock. So this is Dr. B at Code B Performance, and I'm here with Ryan Light from BeatAnxiety.me. And he's going to talk to us about some of the unique treatments that he does or techniques that he uses, I guess. Is that, is that probably not yeah, treatments, well, right? I, 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 they're, they're modalities. So okay. um, they're different techniques, modalities. I like to use the word modality. So Okay. Yeah. Modality. So different modalities that he uses. Um, Ryan is an anxiety coach, not a therapist, um, you know, not a, not a doctor, but no. so I guess, I'd love to hear, and maybe you can share with everybody how you got started doing this. And um, yeah, tell us yeah, your story. So um, thanks for having me. Uh, I appreciate you bringing me on and, and talking about this, this topic that's near and dear to my heart. Um, so I got into coaching. First up, first of all, let me start with I've been struggling with anxiety um, for 30 years. And for 20 of those years, I struggled with it unhealthy. So, and I'll kind of talk about that a little bit as far as healthy and unhealthy. Um, for 20, 20 of those years, I, I, when I retrospect, when I retrospect, I look back, I look at um, how I kind of dealt with these emotions that I've had um, with anxiety, depression, OCD, I had intrusive thoughts, um, sensory motor, which a lot of people call health anxiety. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of these emotions and feelings I was having for 20 years, I went to therapists and counselors and doctors and the litany of uh, specialists that couldn't really help me, to be honest with you. Um, either they wanted to fill me with medications or they wanted to talk about my history. And there's only so much that I could talk about as far as my history goes and, there's, and medication just wasn't working for me. So um, back in 2011, I uh, almost committed suicide. Mm -hmm. And so, what birthed out of that um, struggle was I needed to, for me, I, I decided that, you know what, I need to start really looking at why, why I was dealing with what I was dealing with and not getting any better. As a matter of fact, I was getting worse um, wow. to the point where it almost took my life. And so what birthed out of that was a place of understanding that the anxiety and depressions, those, those emotions and feelings um, were manifestations of deeper issues that I just did not want to confront for 20 years. Mm -hmm. uh, trauma related, um, emotional abuse related, physically abuse related, those types of things. So um, I got into, I sort of, I started really digging in on my healing journey. I started really looking internally and started understanding that some of the things that I should have dealt with, um, you know, 10, 15 years prior to that faithful time in 2011, um, I started to look into those things. And I met a life coach that worked with me and, and slash counselor. So she was a, she was a counselor slash life coach. And really, she started digging into those different areas of my life that I didn't want to touch. And mm -hmm. so once I started dealing with those and working through those issues, 
it was interesting that the manifestations that I was struggling with, the, the anxiety, the depression, even the intrusive of thoughts and the, the sensory motor sensations that I've had um, started to dissipate. Now, granted, that doesn't mean that it went away. It totally goes away. Um, it just, I changed my perspective of how I deal with those things. Uh -huh. um, and that birthed me getting to life coaching. At a life coaching, I did a, a, a niche in on um, mental health and anxiety and depression and those types of things. Because I've really seen, for, for me, there's a gap between um, doctors and therapy. You know, they, they, they don't really... They don't really chat with one another. Mm -hmm. um, so the doctors want to fill me with medications and the therapist wanted to talk to talk about my history, but not really show me how to work through those things. It was all mostly talk therapy. So that's mm -hmm. how I kind of got into the anxiety coaching. Okay. Um, so you're a dad also. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so how do you think, how has your journey so like the last nine years is kind of when you've really yeah. moved beyond you know has, i mean i would imagine that has really affected your parenting too yeah well <laughs> interesting enough you know, um i have four kids three of them uh 20 year old and 18 year old or 19 year old now um 16 year old and a 10 year old and my three older kids really have felt the brunt of my mental health I yeah mean, really they've really They've seen me at my lowest point and not really knowing how to, because I, the way I dealt with my issues was I would isolate and I would, I would retreat. And so they would, they were definitely affected by, um, by the way in which I handled myself because I would mm -hmm. isolate. I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, be the dad that went to the sports games. I wouldn't, because I was just dealing with my own struggle, my own issues. Emotionally unavailable, probably. Huh? Exactly, totally unavailable. Even when I'm physically there, I was emotionally and brain dead, so to say. Mm -hmm. So, um, my 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 three, my oldest three, really felt the brunt of that, and I'm feeling some of that pain today because of that absence as a an absentee father in their earlier life. And my ten year old really has seen me kind of. What's good out of that? situation was they have seen a change they have seen this new birth they have seen um someone come from the depths of despair dealing with mm -hmm. anxiety and depression and these mental health issues to someone that can turn it around so yeah. that's, that's the good side of it my 10 year old he just knows me as this go lucky guy you know go lucky dad that is involved <laughs> so which is a good thing yeah awesome um so you, you touched a little bit on the difference between a coach and a therapist. I guess, where do you find yourself, you know, we talked about the gap between maybe more a medical approach and then talk therapy. Yes. Do you feel like you somewhere fill that gap or or do you help talk therapy maybe be more effective or where do, where do you see that you fit in? Yeah, great question. I see that. So I'm not against therapists, right? So, you know, a lot of people say, are you against therapy? I'm not against therapy. I think therapy has a place for mental health. Uh -huh. uh, for me, therapy didn't work, right? I knew that I was emotionally abused and physically abused. I knew that I was those things, right? Um, what therapy didn't do for me is it didn't teach me how to work through those feelings. Uh -huh. so it, didn't, it was more talk therapy. It was more like, you know, mom did this, dad did that. I knew I grew up in an alcoholic home. I knew that it was abusive. I, I, I knew all these things. Mm -hmm. How do I handle that anger and that frustration and that guilt and that shame and that loneliness and those emotions that I was dealing with? How do, how do you help me work through that? And therapy really never did that for me. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I'm not against therapists. I, I'm not one nor I claim to be one. So therapy has a, a place. Um, but I also think coaching has a place as well, right? So... I think the difference between what I do and what a therapist does is a therapist, I, this, is how I kind of, this is how I like to explain it. Therapy looks back. So therapy retrospects while coaching introspects. So mm -hmm. for me, I, the, to introspect, you have to retrospect a little bit. So you have to look back to understand why, why, why you're dealing with what you're dealing with, right? But you don't sit there. Right. What you do is you introspect and you start looking at and handling and working through the feelings that you feel today, because mm -hmm. that is what's manifesting itself. Right. It's the anxiety, the depression, the anger, the shame, all those different types of emotions 
are manifesting themselves, but we need to learn to work through those. So I think therapy does have its place. Um, it, it, but if, if, if you've been to therapy for 10 years, there might be something that's not working, mm -hmm. right? And there might be something yeah. you might want to look at differently because you've been in therapy for so long. It, it, you might want to just maybe change your perspective a little bit and might look outside the box. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's exactly what I did in my journey, right? I, I was in therapy for 10, 15 years um, and it did absolutely nothing for me. Again, I'm not against them. There's a place for them. I've seen people be become very successful and get the help that they needed. Um, but I have also seen the other half where people just don't get the help that they need. Mm -hmm. um, and then what about, I guess, maybe medication would be the other thing to touch on. You know, how yeah, so, I, so I, am, I am a proponent of medication. Um, mm -hmm. I do take medication myself, so I am a proponent of medication. But I think it's the right medication. Mm -hmm. I don't think that if you are if you're taking Klonopin or you're popping Xanax because you're having a panic attack and you need to numb that feeling, that's a problem, right? That's mm -hmm. that's when you are coping in such a way that is unhealthy. And Klonopin and Xanax and those types of um, medications try to they numb you, right? And so the way in which you can overcome these emotions. In my work, I have folks feel those feelings. Don't run from them. Don't don't hide from them. Don't try to match them. Feel them and then work through them. So if you're popping, you know, if you're taking Xanax and you're taking Clodopin to overcome a panic attack, uh, that's not the proper way to use medication. Um, mm -hmm. I take medication because my neurotransmitters, my SSRIs, were low, and I had a naturopath. Interesting enough, I had a naturopath in Seattle do multiple neurotransmitter tests on me. Uh -huh. um, yep. And she had me take every vitamin known to man. I was eating roses and reading, eating tulips and I was doing all the natural stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Finally, she was, she was a good doctor, right? Cause she really cared about helping me get better. And she said, you know what, Ryan, the, you know, uh, she's a naturopath. And so her natural tendency is to go the natural route. Um, uh -huh. But the natural stuff wasn't working for me. And so she basically said, you know, why don't we get you back on conventional medication, see how that works. And we took the neurotransmitter test. I'm not, I'm not sure if you're familiar with those types of tests. But yeah. They, okay. So they basically test your neurotransmitters. And I took four or five of them in the course of working with her. And it revolutionized my way of thinking around our bodies and those, and those neurotransmitters, the imbalance yeah. that people talk about, especially as right. you talk about in your practice. Um, we do have imbalances. We just do. And medication sure. fill that gap for me. So I think if you're taking medication to help come along on, on your journey. Now, again, if you're popping pills thinking that's the magic pill and that's going to overcome everything, then you're also going, going to be highly mistaken, right? Because that's not the, uh, it's supposed to be used in context or in, in contrast with working through different emotions. Does that make right. any sense? Right. So a little bit, why do you think, I think as a society, we have difficulty with emotions, right? I mean, that's, I think that's why we have, so, one of the reasons we have such a huge mental health issue, you know, right. problem. Um, I guess, you know, what can we, do, I, you know, as a parent myself too, right? Like how can we teach our children to be better, you know, like recognizing feelings, I guess, or is there a process you go through with your clients that we can, use with our kids you yeah. don't know where i'm going with well, I mean, <laughs> it's convoluted I talk a lot about what feelings is i say you know what you refuse to feel will reveal mm. so if if you if you if and the other question i have with people is i had had a I met with a client last night and she's angry and i'm like okay what is what's what's angry like what is it She's like, I don't know. I'm just angry. I'm like, well, what, what does that mean? What do you mean by that? What does that feel like? Mm -hmm. Is it butterflies? Is it tightness in the chest? Do you feel in your throat? Do you feel in your head? Like, what does that mean? What does angry mean? Mm -hmm. And a lot of us can't define those feelings because yeah. we've, never, we've never allowed ourselves to feel them. You can't do anything with a feeling if, you tr if you're constantly not trying to feel it. Mm -hmm. 
so I think for me, and a lot of times what I find with people, especially with the things that we struggle with, mm -hmm. we tend to want to run and hide and mask these feelings. And so we never really feel those feelings. So it's kind of like depression. When someone says, I feel depressed, it, it, they don't really know what they feel. It's like, okay, what do I feel? Well, I feel sad. Well, what, what does that mean? Sad means what? And when I start digging and start saying, okay, is that like, do you have like a numbing feeling? Do you feel numb? Like you just feel like blah? Like, is that the feeling that you have? Yes, that's the feeling I have. Okay, let's focus on that feeling. Mm -hmm. Right. Let's not only focus on it, let's hyper focus on that feeling and get reacquainted with that numbing feeling. And as you get reacquainted with that numbing feeling, then you can do something with the feeling. Right. I can't work with it. I can't work with someone that that refuses to feel the feeling. Yeah. Right. They just they equate irritated with anger or I'm frustrated with you know, anger, or I'm, you know, I, I'm, I feel shaky, or um, I, I feel, you know, jittery, I'm anxious, right? And there, there's an element to that, because the body is, is expressing that feeling, but they still don't know what that feeling feels like, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. Yeah. So, like, with I, um, with my kids, what I've, what I've learned is, I allow them, you know, if you feel frustrated, like my 10 year old, right, he wants to play Fortnite. Mm -hmm. It's math work or Fortnite. Well, you can't play Fortnite because you need to do math. And then he gets frustrated. He gets angry. Mm -hmm. And so um, because of that, you know, I teach him to express his emotions in such a way that he actually feels that feeling. And then we can do something with it. Yeah. Right? We can actually do something with it. And that's where these other modalities come into effect, EFT, TFT, these other things that we'll probably talk about. So, yeah, what I would encourage people to do is, you know, if they – and journaling is a really good technique, like to journal, let those emotions out. I think journaling is a, is a really cool modality to use um, for a therapeutic perspective, like to get those emotions out. So take, for instance, if I'm working with someone that's <clears throat> dealing with um, anger and, you know, what I found with depression is depression sits up here and then under that depression mm. is anger. Okay. So depression is the manifestation that someone's feeling. They feel like they don't feel like doing anything or they feel lost in the world or they feel whatever they feel. They're feeling these emotions. And typically what I found was under that, under that depression is anger. And what it is, it's anger that's unprocessed, right? It's unprocessed correctly. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to process it correctly. And there's two types of anger. There's anger that's fits of rage, right? So you have fits of rage that, are, that you rage out. And then there's rage that goes within. Mm. And so you, so you change that focus within and then you rage in. And that's how we get suicidal thoughts and suicidal ideations. And we hate ourselves and those types of things because you we haven't processed that anger correctly. Mm -hmm. And it's more focused. And the manifestation of that anger is depression. Um, and then there's some cousins. There's shame. There's guilt. There's grief. There's some other cousins associated with that with that anger feeling um uh -huh. that, or that that anger but if, when you learn to process that anger correctly and work through the anger or these cousins correctly the dis the the the, the depression starts to dissipate yeah it's really really um wild while people don't they don't realize they just feel depressed right so they go to the doctor and they pop a pill and they try to feel better um but you have to work through that you have to work through those different emotions that are under the surface if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I love how you described too that about feeling it and feeling it even in your body, right? You know, like the, yeah. do you feel tightness in your chest or, you know, you know, your throat, right? You feel like you can't swallow or whatever. Um, you know, in chiropractic, we talk we talk about subluxation obviously, right? The spine, you know, if it's not moving correctly. And we talk about three causes of subluxation and the first one is thoughts. It's three T's, you know, it's thoughts, yeah. traumas and toxins. So, yep. um, yeah, for sure, it, the mind-body connection is so real, and so many of us see it. Right. It's interesting. Even when you adjust me, you're in my middle of the back. You're like, you can't adjust that one, that one manually, and you're like, yep, yep that's all for us. I'm like, yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, so, yeah, so you talked about you use some different modalities, maybe not things that everybody has heard of. Um, you mentioned EFT and TFT, I believe. Could you explain what those are? And yeah, so, so those are um, 
EFT stands for emotion, emotional freedom technique. Um, and TFT stands for thought field therapy. Mm. Um, they're, they're, they're acupuncture points on the body where you tap. And so as you tap, you, I always tell people, um, so I'm a, mass, I'm a master practitioner in, in EFT, uh, practitioner in TFT. TFT is more, um, uh, more uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, algorithms. So it's like there's different algorithms for different things that we're dealing with. Um, and mm -hmm. I always forget which algorithm I need to do because they're like there's like a hundred of them. So I'm still working yeah. on the TFT side. But the EFT is a it's acupressure points that you tap on, and EFT emotional freedom technique is more around dealing with how you feel. Mm. Right. So if you feel anger. T EFT is really, really good for tapping on the different pressure points while releasing that feeling. Okay. And so basically how it works is you, so for me with my clients, I have them hyper-focus on the feeling. So I get them into a, a beta state as far as meditative state in a, in a beta state um, where they can now focus on that particular feeling. And when they focus on that particular feeling, Either I'll do the tapping if they if they allow me to, or we'll or I'll tap along with them on that particular feeling. And what happens is you you use you, you use a what's called a SU scale. Um, and SU scale is basically zero to ten. Um, and based in how that person might feel from a seven or eight, and try to walk walk that person down to a two or a three. Mm. The effective modality. That was the thing about um, going to therapy. The talk therapy really never helped me work through those emotions, right? They never really helped me kind of, I'm feeling this way. Like, how do I, how do I, how do I get rid of these feelings, mm -hmm. right? So to say, like, how do I work through mm -hmm. them? And so EFT really helped me kind of dig into um, those feelings, feel them, and then work through them. Um, so awesome modality. Um, it's really, it's energy centric. So it works on the different, um, pressure points within our bodies. Yeah. And so it really, it's really, it's a calming, it's a calming technique. Also, there's a faster EFT technique I do with people that struggle with panic attacks. Mm. So having panic attack, if you feel, cause most of us, if a panic attack comes on, it's zero to 10, right? You're like, you're alive today. And within a second, you're, you, you're going to die. Mm -hmm. And so. Panic attack is faster EFT is a faster tapping modality that helps you calm yourself down pretty quickly. I mean, within a minute, though, it calms you down. EFT is more, it's more work. It takes a little bit longer time. You have to work through those issues. And I've, I've, I've used EFT from general anxiety to trauma, mm. right? To sexual abuse trauma. So I've used that modality for feelings, um, from the gamut, right? From just general to a lot of deep seated trauma. Yeah. Excellent modality. The other modality I use is NLP, which okay. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that, that's neuro linguistic programming. Mm -hmm. um, that's the uh, that's more how you think, right? So it's more challenging the way you think and having having you change the way you think based on how you see the world. So kinesthetically, audibly. Um, visually, um, those types of those types of ways in which we see the world, um, NLP works using those different ways to help change the way you think. So, I, I'll use NLP if someone is dealing with, um, let's say, thoughts about themselves. Mm -hmm. So, shameful thoughts like I feel sh I, I feel shame about what I did, or I feel shame about who I am, like. Those types of different thought thoughts that they might have about themselves, I'll use NLP um, to help work through the thought patterns that we have. Because really, it's it's a thought pattern, like what you just said, right? Toxin, trauma, and thought. So really, it's the thought patterns that need to change. And NLP is just an outrageously good technique to use for those different thought patterns mm -hmm. uh, and changing the way we think. Because a lot of us are struggling with what, what we struggle with is it's a thought thing. It's a thought. Yeah. Um, and the thoughts, we have to have, we have to change the way we think about things, which changes our perspective of things. And as we change our perspective of things, of things, we 
the I always tell people that when you change your perspective of it, what you're going through changes. Mm. Does it doesn't right. change the fact that you're going through it? Like yeah. that's, not, that's not what we're trying to change. We're trying to change that you've either gone through it or you're going through it. It just changes your perspective of why you're going through it. Mm. Right? We change the why to what, and when we change the why to what, we start we stop asking why the why and start asking what out of this do I need to learn? Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. Yeah. So with most of your clients, do you end up using a combination of techniques? Do you focus on one? Yeah, depending on what they're struggling with, um, it, it, it could it could be a combination of alongside therapy, medication, plus coaching. Um, it, mm-hmm. take, it could be alongside things. It could be it really depends on what they're struggling with. Um, I guess I was thinking your modalities. Like, do, are you going to use EFT and NLP with somebody, or do you tend to focus yeah, on? Yeah. So, it dep- so um, take for instance the someone I someone I work with that has trauma. Mm-hmm. Um, you change the NL. You change the, use NLP, and this is a really good technique called the Rewind technique um, uh, to work through trauma. Uh, work through trauma in such a way that changes that trauma where you don't have the you don't have the emotion towards the trauma no more. Mm. Um, you just you kind of look at it from a third party perspective. Because um, mm. with trauma, a lot of times what we fear is the fear, mm. right? We 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 fear fear, and we don't allow ourselves to feel feel the fear. We're scared of the fear, not so much of the trauma. And mm. so, if we can look at the trauma from you know, if we can broaden, come out a little bit, and look at the trauma from like a third party, like I tell people that you. What we'll do is you will no longer be um, a participant in the trauma. You'll become a um, audience of the trauma. So mm. it's like you're watching a movie rather than being in the movie. Mm. It's a really cool technique called the rewind technique from an NLP perspective that really dives into that and really helps to to change the perspective of the trauma. Right? Again, doesn't change what happened to you. It changes how you see it. Yeah. So that would work on how you think about it and how you see it. The EFT and TFT will work on how you feel about it, mm-hmm. right? Because if you take, for instance, um, trauma that might be that might make you shameful, make make might make you feel shameful, um, like like I was physically abused, and so that physical abuse sometimes, you know, I always thought it was my fault, and so I right. was to blame. I was the one. I was the reason why that happened to me. Mm-hmm. So it no longer was I guilty for what happened. The toxic shame set in, right? So the to- and shame is I'm um, you know guilt is I'm um, um, sorry for what I did. Shame is I'm sorry for who I am, mm. and that shame becomes toxic. So for me, um, dealing with the physical abuse, the rewind technique really helped me to kind of step out of that. In those those instances, um, look at it from third party. That helped me change my perspective of what was done to me, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but it didn't change the feelings. So the feelings needed to change through the EFT TFT modality. So really, it's a handshake of both. Yeah. And when it's done, when it's done both, it becomes very very effective. Yeah. How quickly do you see people make you know significant progress, or is it very individual? Uh, so I, I'll give you, for instance, I, I met with a, a young man last night. I was seeing him when I first, his mom contacted me um, because he struggles with intrusive thoughts. And intrusive thoughts are typically, there's three types of intrusive thoughts that I've seen. I've had all three of them, plus some. <laughs> they're they're um, inappropriate sexual behavior. They're inappropriate religious behavior. Um, and they're violent in nature. Right, so we have so we it, people that struggle with intrusive thoughts typically have. I'm driving down the street and I'm going to run over, so I'm going to run over a biker, and so the thought is, if I drive down the street and I see a biker, I'm going to run him over or her over. Mm. So for me not to have that thought, I'm not going to drive. Mm. Right? So you know, so they become um, agoraphobic. Very limiting, yeah. Agoraphobic, where they won't even leave their house. So right. this this uh, young gentleman had. You know, intrusive thoughts that were sexual in nature, right? So he had inappropriate sexual thoughts um, that he just could not. He went to doctors. He went to therapy. He went to specialized, specialized um, uh, 
uh, EMDR type stuff. Like he he did it all and uh -huh. nothing, nothing. And I think I've seen him four or five times. And last night was my last session with him. Last wow. Time, last time I was like, you know, but we don't need to do this no more. Um, touch base with me if you need me, but you're, you're pretty much you're good to go. Um, and awesome. then I gave him the modalities to use, right? I gave him the tools and techniques right. to use because I don't, right. you know, my, my, it's interesting as a, as a coach, um, and I, you might even think like this yourself, my ultimate goal is not to have any clients. Mm. Right? If my heart is in the right place, my ultimate goal is to not to have to heal, not have to help anybody. That, yeah. that if my heart's in the right place. So my ultimate goal is to never have anybody. Right. The reality is people, I'm going to have people, right? But you know, my ultimate yeah. goal is to get you in a place that you can do this stuff on your own. Right. And be off on your own, right? Go live life in spite of how you're feeling. Go do mm -hmm. life, right? And go do life with the things that we I've taught you. Um, mm -hmm. and that was a, a success story. Is that last time I met with him last night? So, which was good. So it depends. I seen one woman for a year, um, and I saw him for five five times. So yeah, it's interesting in the in the journey. What I found was especially for those that struggle with mental health type issues is there's a is I I tell people that there's a that I go through kind of these four stages. There is a, an acceptance stage, or better yet, an acknowledgement stage, a discovery stage, an acceptance stage, and an embracing stage. And what I found, what for me, I was in the acknowledgement stage for 20 years. So I can acknowledge that I was feeling this way. I wouldn't have been the therapist. I wouldn't have been to different doctors. I wouldn't have did what I'd done. Well, I wouldn't have done what I did, I did. if I didn't. Um, no, you I, had a problem. Yeah. yeah, I didn't acknowledge it. Right. Where I was stuck at is I was stuck in between the acknowledgement and the acceptance. Mm. Because I had to deal through the discovery phase. I had to go through the, the issues in which is why I was dealing with what I was dealing with, right? Mm -hmm. So people think that since I'm saying something, since I'm acknowledging it, I'm accepting it. Mm. And that chasm is deep and wide. Mm. So it doesn't really matter. That's why people go to therapists for 20, 30 years. Right. Because they think, oh, I'm acknowledging it. Oh, I'm acknowledging it. Oh, I'm saying something about it. I'm actually dealing with it and working through it. And that's not the case. The case is that you have to go through the discovery phase, kind of like when working with you, right? I come to see you, then you start navigating my muscles to figure out okay what's not what's 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 being fired what's not being fired right it's it's a discovery phase right. and to be honest with you some of the times just wasn't comfortable <laughs> yes right it's was it yep. you're poking and you're prodding you're pulling and you're lifting and you're <laughs> so it's, it's just not comfortable because you're going through a discovery phase yep. and when you discover that that area that needs firing that's where the acceptance comes in and then my body that you then you hit these points that allow me to my muscle to be accepted. So same type of philosophy. Yeah. Um, and the more I fight you, right, with the adjustments, the more I fight you, the the the, the more it's not going to happen. Just right. because I don't see you doesn't mean that you know, boom, I'm going to be okay. I need to allow my body to do what it needs to be done. Yeah. yeah. So it's that same type of premise. But people and and Perfect. people with us, so, you know, they just. We've been doing this for 10, 15, 20 years, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so how would somebody know if they could benefit from an anxiety coach? Are there other anxiety coaches? Are you <laughs> you're the no, first person I've met who uses that? I thought I had a niche on this thing, man. I thought, I was like, <laughs> I thought people would be lined up off the door and I'd be like, everybody want to come see me. Um, and I still I have a pretty good base. But I think that for me, I always tell people that you know, if you've if you've gone through the litany of therapists and doctors, and you're still, I mean, what's what I find interesting about people is they'll, I'll ask them, are you are you seeking, have you seek counseling? Have you seek a therapist? Have you have you done what you need to do to work through this? And either yes, right, for 10, 15 years, that's one indication that you might want to think out of the box to do something different. Yeah. Um, or they do nothing at all, right? Because it comes mm -hmm. down to um, either they're scared to, um, or from a financial perspective, right? They don't have the finances to, mm -hmm. to do those types of things. But I think that if you are in a place where 
you you need help and you and you think that you need to go, you're ready for help. Um, that's the acknowledgement phase, and you want to heal. That's the difference between I think um, I really I really base my work on healing because mm-hmm. I'm a firm believer that you, we can heal these issues when we dig deeper into what is really going on. Yeah. Um, and so I always tell people they can benefit from seeing someone like me if they are ready to work through and he- and heal those issues. If they want to talk, and, you know, if they want to talk about their anxieties and depression, I'm probably not the best person for them. Um, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not. I'm just not. I, I'm not talk therapy. That's not what you're about. Yeah. I'm not about. I'm not. I'm not. I'm about getting deeper um, around the real issues. And yeah. so a couple of clients I had to fire. A couple of clients, I'm like, you know what? You just you you're wasting your time. You're wasting your money with me. <laughs> um, and so yeah, I think that people can benefit if they if they've gone through a litany of therapists. Um, they might want to think out of the box and maybe change the perspective on maybe some modalities that could um, benefit them that they just maybe haven't heard of, like EFT, TFT, and NLP. These different modalities that we've talked about. Yeah. That's great. So even, you know, I have a lot of other chiropractors, of course, that follow my page. So as health, you know, professionals, we can help identify those people too, right? If they're still struggling and um, they've been seeking counseling forever, then maybe reach, you know, we can connect with someone like you and connect the patient with them. Yeah. So. Totally. Yep. Um, and so do you do your work remotely or in person? And I know you have a couple options. I do both. Um, I do. I'm not, I don't have to fall prey to the the legal stuff of a state right because i don't have to be licensed not licensed (laughs) so you know it's not like i don't think you you can go to like maybe you can um i know therapists can't um but we uh i'm not i'm not i'm not stuck on that so i can be tele telehealth or i can be Mm -hmm. in local so um i see people local in my office uh, mm-hmm. And then I see people online just like this. So I think that both is most effective. Uh, interesting enough, the online version, it, if someone can be comfortable in their house, it, I, they're a little bit more opt to be open with what they're struggling with. Okay. Because everybody works from a place of safety. Um, yeah. And they feel safe in their own home. And that, 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 that sense of safety that they, that they do have, um, they, I've found that they're a little bit more apt to really – dig a little bit deeper rather than me seeing the whites of my eyes in person. So, <laughs> Got it. And then I saw on your website, you have a Facebook group. You also offer individual coaching. Is that, can you choose one or the other or yeah, they kind so, of are they go together? Um, so I have a Facebook group. Um, I have a, my Facebook is beatanxiety.me. You can find me there. Then I have a Facebook group. I have two groups over, um, that I kind of manage. One was when I one was a paid. I charged seven dollars a month for that. One was it was a paid um, group, but then I removed that payment. Um, and they, those members have a little bit more of my time, a little bit more of my uh, insights, a little bit more of my coaching. Uh-huh. Um, there's only so much I can do because what we struggle with is so individualized. Yeah. Right. That really, from a group perspective, I really can't get into issues. So it has to be kind of surface level. And Mm -hmm. so I might might talk about breathing techniques and meditative techniques and things that we can do to help calm ourselves down. Uh Um, But to really get into the nitty gritty, you need the one on one coaching. So really, you just need that. So um, I tried the group thing before. And it just, it, it was it wasn't successful in such a way that people felt good, right? That they were acknowledging, that they were acknowledging it. Everybody mm-hmm. felt good about themselves, which is okay, but feelings come and go, right? So feeling, you feel high now and then then reality sets in and now you feel low. Yeah. And so, yeah, so the Facebook group is free. Um, okay. It gets a little bit more attention on, on uh, from me. And then obviously I do one-on-one coaching as well. Okay. Very good. Um, in your journey through mental health, did you have you heard about like the brain gut connection or some people said the gut brain connection, all that? Yeah, I had a um, you worked with a naturopath, I'm sure she yeah, probably addressed that. Yeah, because <laughs> I'm 
Uh, I'm from New York, but lived in Seattle for 20 years, so I got the Northwest uh, vibe going on. So yeah. I'm a Northwester with a New York accent. Um, so I had, I had a real, I had, a, I mean, this guy was straight up natural bath. Now, interesting enough that I'm not sure how it is in the state of Georgia or from PA, from where you're from, but in, in Seattle, Washington, you have to, it's a, you're a doctor. Yes. You are, you are, you're a licensed doctor. You got your doctor of naturopathy or whatever. Actually, it's a big, I'm not sure if you know the, um, the training facility out there, there's a big naturopath training facility that. It's kind of nation. It's national recognized. I've got the name of it. Um, uh, but anyway, you know, all of our neurotransmitters come from our gut. Mm-hmm. Right. So right. Yeah, you were talking about that. That's what I'm thinking about. Yeah, everything comes from the gut. So if you have gut problems, yeah. Um, obviously, that is going to fall prey to how we think, and that's where we feel the butterflies or feel that tension. All that mm-hmm. is the neuronephrine. And the adrenaline kind of just coming from the gut. So that's all pumping up, going through our to have these different types of feelings. So there's a definite gut brain connection that mm-hmm. um, a lot of folks just don't know. Right? Yeah. They, just, they don't understand. Um, and my naturopath out in Seattle really helped me to understand how I was eating, what I was eating, how I was exercising, what I was not doing. What, mm-hmm sleep was affecting it like it was everything I was doing was wrong (laughs) everything um and so no wonder why I crashed and you know I I did because everything I was doing was wrong because for for me to cope I reached for the bottle of wine Mm -hmm. so you know and I didn't I didn't do it because I wanted to just you know have a glass I did it because I wanted to numb the feelings yeah or I would binge eat, or I would not eat at all, or you know what I mean? Like, so it was all over the board with me. Um, but right. that definite, there's no doubt the science is behind it. There is a gut brain connection. Um, yeah. if you don't if you don't work through that, that's the physical side of us. Yeah. If you don't work the, work through the physical side, um, it's it, you'll it will have an impact. There's just no doubt about it. Yeah. Do you have a naturopath or anyone you work with now or kind of share uh, clients? I, I don't have one. Um, my wife has one. I don't, I haven't seen hers yet. Um, uh-huh. I still love my one in Seattle and I'm trying to get her to break the rules a little bit, but she won't. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, well, definitely don't say her name now. <laughs> she, uh, she definitely, uh, I fell in love with her and she really has helped me out. So yeah, I have a fan. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Um, Great chiropractor. Oh, a great chiropractor. Oh yes, who's that? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, thank you. Um, you shared one awesome testimonial earlier. Do you have any other favorite stories you like to share? Um, yeah, you know, I think that all my all my stories, whether they're everybody I work with, whether they're whether I see them off on a good note or i just couldn't do nothing for them i'm a, i'm a firm believer that everything happens for a reason everybody comes into your life circumstances circumstances situations um the good and the bad um have a reason so you know, i've seen i've seen a lot of success stories that came from me um there's one woman i one woman i worked with up in michigan that's the woman i saw for a year um she was dealing with toxic shame. She she struggles with borderline personality disorder. She was in a relationship um, that was emotionally abusive. She never lived out of the state of Michigan. She, I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Um, and she's made a complete turnaround. Moved from Michigan, got out of the abusive relationship. Um, now lives in Georgia, interesting enough. Oh, wow. uh, and has totally just revolutionized and changed her her lifestyle, change the way she eats, change the way she thinks, change. She's still on a healing journey, right? She's still yeah. going through her healing journey, um, but she's a totally different person than, than who she was. And she's, you know, she's kind of my, 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 uh, my white paper on taking someone that was, has, has been labeled with, you know, her label was borderline personality disorder, right? That was her label. Mm-hmm. Right, she boom, and that's what she was. I'm borderline. I'm borderline. I'm so borderline. I act like this because I'm borderline. Um, and the fact of the matter that was only a label. Mm-hmm. And so, 
but that label became her identity, right? It became how she saw the world. She saw the world through her label. And as she started working with me, it took me months to start changing her perspective of that label, right? And, and, and get rid of that label to the point that even now, even the way now she talks about it, because she does have her ups and downs, right? This is something that she does struggle with. Yeah. And borderlines do have these ups and downs. And so she does struggle with these ups and downs, but she recognizes it and even talks about it differently. So mm. um, classic white paper case around loving someone through their emotional issues um, and seeing the best of someone and using the modalities that we talked about to help heal those underlying issues, right? Yeah. And those issues she just never wanted to deal with. And so yeah. as we worked with them, the manifestation started to dissipate. So which was, that's her classic case, my white paper on- um, Awesome. On do you ever I, work with kids? Have you worked I, with any children? Do, um, I do work with kids. They're, they're a little bit different working with mm -hmm. them. Um, I would rather see them local. I'd rather see them inside my office. Um, yeah. Just because of the comfort level. I'll even sometimes if they're local, I'll go to their house to uh -huh. see them. Um, yeah. just so they're comfortable in, in their place. So, um, they, the problem with kids is they don't really, not a problem, but they, they're, they haven't, they haven't learned how to, um, work through those different emotions and feelings. They feel them. Uh -huh. Um, and they're not, parents have a hard time acknowledging them. Uh -huh. right? you know, it's kind of like quit crying or shut up or just, you know, quit whining or whatever it might be. Right. So they, parents have a hard time themselves interesting yeah. enough because they don't know how to deal with them right like they don't with their own emotions yeah and so they so it sprinkles in and it, and it deals with the with with their kids and so the kids feel um what i found with kids is kids will either act out in such a way that um that may not be appropriate like they'll they'll have tantrums or they'll have they'll have frustrations like my son my 10 year old 11 year old now um was scared to go in scared of sleep in his room mm. when he was 10 years old and i'm a guy coach this stuff and i'm like dude go upstairs man like, <laughs> like, like, go like quit sleeping on our floor like stop it yeah um, and i coached this stuff and i had to like take a step back all right ryan you have your own fears how do we work through these fears and because he's it's fear of the dark and um so he would get, he'd have full on temper tantrums, like full uh -huh. on, let's just full on temper tantrums. And so I worked with him some, some tapping, we did some tapping with one another. Um, and did it cure him? No, but it calmed him down enough to face the fear. Yeah. Right. It calmed him down enough to, I acknowledged what he was going through. Um, and that acknowledgement alone was kind of let the air out a little bit and yeah. then we worked through those different feelings. So, um, yeah, I've also seen there's a um, 14, 15, 13, 14, no, she's 14, 14-year-old 14 who um, was bullied in school. And so the way she kept, the way she coped with bullying was she would purge and then um, she would binge purge, binge purge, binge purge. Mm -hmm. And that she was dealing with those different emotions through food, right? So from a doctor's perspective, she has an eating disorder, which she does. Right? Yeah, that's the way she was manifesting her coping mechanisms with mm -hmm. binge, purge, binge, purge. Well, when you go deeper, right, rather than working through eat on this particular time, have this amount of food, like said, so, and not, I'm not saying that that's wrong. What I'm saying is we need to go deeper, right? You you start going deeper on okay, she's hurting from the bullying, right, and now she feels shame. And the shame is becoming toxic because now again, she's not she's not guilty for purging and binging. She's she now she's guilty for who she is. Mm. And so as I as we work through those deeper emotions and feelings, she started working through those things and healing those things through tapping and through these different modalities. Um, so her eating disorder started to dissipate. Now. Is, if, is food still her struggle? Yes, it's still her struggle. Is she totally just like cured? No, but now she at least understands that when she does feel like doing these things, what is those? What are those emotions, right? Are they shame? Are they the, those those feelings that she was feeling with trying? She was trying to drown the way, so to say. Mm -hmm. that makes sense. 
So, yeah, I mean, I will see kids. Kids are just a bit more delicate. Um, but I'd rather see a kid when he's 10 than when he's a grown up when he's 40 and 30 years into um, dealing with what he deals with. So, right. yes, yeah, kids are, kids are, you, I can see kids. It does work with kids. Awesome. Um, so, how can people find you, get in touch with you? Yeah, you can find me online at uh, beatanxiety.me, not com, but dot me. Um, and then that's all my social channels. So I'm on Instagram, um, um, on Facebook. Uh, I'm even on TikTok. Uh, so you can find me on TikTok. <laughs> some of your videos. Well. Yeah, TikTok, it's, TikTok is a great community. Um, a lot of uh, inspiration and a lot of learning that's done within that 15 to 30 minute little video. So um, I really, I've come to enjoy TikTok more where I can let out, um, I can give more practical advice from a video perspective. So, but yeah, you find me online at beatingxiety.me, Facebook beatingxiety.me, TikTok beatingxiety.me. Um, I'm on all those major uh, social medias and websites. So, you can awesome. Find Great. Well, thank you so much for <laughs> sharing all that with us and sharing your yeah. story. And yeah, thank you so much. yeah, I'll be happy to send some people your way, I'm sure. <laughs> Not great. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye bye. All right. Bye bye.